All right, guys, what's good? Welcome back to Real Fan Sports Podcast, episode five. Big number five here. What's good? We got our co host, Jacksonville's finest. What up, what up? And then we got a Miami native, Gabe. I don't know why he's flexing like that. <laughs> Gabe, I, I couldn't see anything, man. It was, no, I haven't been in a room. Yeah, he's, he's I not, I, I all I saw was your shirt dangling from your arm. <laughs> Listen, Gabe, yo, if you're going to do that, you're going to have to do some push-ups before we start this podcast. Before you, if you're going you to come out here flexing you gotta get a like pump. that. You know, hit that pull-up bar or something. <laughs> yo, let's get right into it. Yo, we're going to talk NBA free agency. A lot of moves been going on. Um, you know, outside of the bubble, you know, after the season. And we're, we're going to see, like, yo, who, who do you guys think won free agency? Uh, it's my opinion, you guys already know, I'm going to say Laker Nation, man, right now, they're making moves, yo. Yeah. Who do you think, Gabe? Well, I think, uh, you know, today, uh, or it came out recently, uh, Anthony Davis re-signed, five-year, $190 million, which is kind of what we expected. I mean, he kind of held out for a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you know, so I guess it was scary for Laker Nation for a little bit. He might go to Clippers or something. I don't know. But um, uh, that was the funniest part about it because it's like, <laughs> yo, uh, Lake, Lakers were making so many moves, right? And yeah. They made they saved the best for last. They're like, yo, how much money does this organization have yeah. to give AD the max? Everybody's waiting. Yo. AD's gonna get the max. All right, boom, sign this guy. Can right, you imagine if he AD? left? He's like, nah, fuck <laughs> what this. About, <laughs> like, what, about AD, what about AD's max, bro? Yeah. Le- LeBron signs. <laughs> But nah, you're definitely right, and I mean, I feel like Lakers won uh, this free agency, bro. They they got younger, first of all. Uh, examples, man. They got what Danny Green out of there. Got Schroeder, big age gap there. You know, Danny Green vet. You know, brought in a young, explosive uh, point guard. You know, for that team, and you know, LeBron's been running point essentially when Rondo was out. Right, he had to be the playmaker and score. So when Rondo came back, that made his job a lot easier. But then, boom, now they got Schroeder, who is, uh, what, he got second place for sixth man. He was the runner-up. Yeah. And then they actually get the sixth man of the year, Montrez Harrell, from the Clippers. That's crazy. I mean, those are big acquisitions. Yeah, I mean, I, I felt like, you know, this Lakers playoff team, they had a bunch of, I mean, they had good players, but, like, their bench was, like, filled with, like, a bunch of just, like, random, you know, players. Like, Dwight Howard, Rajon Rondo. Um, they got rid of a lot of those players. So I think Dwight Howard went to the Sixers. Rajon Wondro is with the Hawks now. Um, but they still definitely made moves. Um, yeah. And they're yeah. going to be contenders coming up. Uh, uh, you know, they're, st- they're still a top team. They're, there's no way that, you know, you can't deny. Oh, for they sure. They're setting themselves up for a two-peat, maybe even a three-peat going on. What They got rid of Rondo, Danny Green, Dwight Howard, JaVel McGee, uh, and Quinn Cook. But um, the age gap, man, was shortest 27, Harold's. 26 and we got what danny green 33 and rondo we all know he's at 34 years old so i mean they they got these younger guys you know not super young like early 20s but um that's not really playoff experience but then they have those vets on the team to to make up for that Uh, Uh, make sure they're doing the right thing set them up for some speed bro they traded javel mcgee to clear space for mark gasol he's That's another edition. Again, they're getting that's, big that's in the paint. I think it's upgrade because Javel McGree is one of the oldest, you know, he's an older player. Uh, you know, he's well respected. I think people like him in, in the league. Um, he has his respect over time. Uh, he was yeah. a joke at first, but, you know, his time with the Warriors, they really developed him in that system. And then him, you know, winning another ring, you know, yeah. with the Lakers as well, which, I mean, he didn't play much, but he did what he had to do for the most part during the season. So is know? Gasol going to kind of take over that same role as like what Dwight Howard did? It's kind of like that. Uh, that's yeah, kinda, that's, I, I agree. I, I think so. Um, Gabe, you go have this take. Go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say because you know, uh, you know, it's either that you need you need big man because you got rid of these guys, right? With Dwight, Dwight Howard, which you right. know, for better for worse, you know, he's a big man. You need him down. Otherwise, you have to put AD at the five. You know what I mean? Because you know, you got to get these big guys uh, uh, that can rebound at the bottom of the, uh, of the boards that can bang the boards. Um, so you know, you got you got to get a big man. I think, like I said. Gasol's a, a great upgrade. Um, uh, the team is just, they're stacked, man. They're stacked. And they're, they're, they're poised the to. Yeah. yeah. Uh, got again, both like, the you Gasol got brothers on. Bro, you got your, you got your, um, you got your center, let's say AD needs to say, take a rest, right? Who do you throw in? Dwight, which he yeah. wasn't really much of an offensive threat. Like, you know, he had like great putbacks, you know, offensive rebounds. Yeah, for sure. You know, he'll haggle the guys inside, you know, get very aggressive. But Marcus Gasol could also do that. And we all know he could do scoring, bro. This guy could shoot threes. He could spread the floor. 
You yeah. know what I mean? He he could, you know, pound inside. He good the post moves, good footwork. You know, so I, I think they really upgraded offensively with that move. Yeah, you definitely want AD, you know, at the you know, three or four. You want him out outside. You don't want him down below. He can do that. You know, that's not outside of his game. Um, but if you saw the playoffs, you saw how many clutch, you know, game enders that this guy had. Um, yeah, you know, need somebody else uh, you know, that can can do the dirty work uh, per se, you know what I mean? Uh but yeah. Um, so it's, moving it's, on. Uh, moving let's on talk from, about LeBron's. Yo, hold on. Hey, you want to talk about LeBron? Why are you going to talk about LeBron? No, we're, yeah, about LeBron. Yeah, we're, we're not talking about the Lakers, but I'm only talking about LeBron. Oh, my God. Like well, so that. let's hear this Laker news from the most oh. recent Lakers fan <sighs> ever. Hold on. The newest He's Laker fan. He's over LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Anyways, he got a two-year extension on top of his contract. 85 yeah. mil in total of four years. 154 million for the go right there. Jojo, let me ask you something. What are you gonna do when LeBron retires? Like, what what are you gonna do? Are you just gonna stop watching basketball? That's that's a good question. I, I think basketball will be pointless after. That. <laughs> what am I gonna watch? Is that why what's you don't watch reason? football? Because pay many. What's, what, <laughs> what's the purpose of watching basketball? Tyler Hero, bro. Come, come to South Beach. We got Tyler Hero. <laughs> come to South Beach. I'm, re- I'm already out here. Take I'm your talents to here. South Beach. <laughs> I'm, already, this man, I'm already out here. <laughs> this man's got so many jerseys and so many random teams that he doesn't even root for. Bro, two teams, bro. Miami and uh, Lakers. That's all I got. You got your Nets, bro. Got your Nets. That's your hometown team. Nah, nah, nah. They're, they're upgrading. They're upgrading. Yo, they can do their thing. I always represent Brooklyn, but to say I'm a Nets fan, I don't know, man. That's different. I'm not going to jump on that bandwagon. Oh, just say you know, LeBron. If right, I'll be a Nets fan, if LeBron goes to the Nets, it's not a bandwagon. Nets. If you're from there, bro, like, <laughs> like I said, I would represent, but I'm not gonna, you know, start room for them just because they're, you know, they're winning. I'm not gonna as, do that. As long as it's not the Knicks, bro, you you'll be fine. Does, does no, it feel as satisfying though? Like <laughs> I, I can't imagine it feeling as satisfying like when you have a team that you've root for your whole life and then they finally win, like. You don't root for the Lakers, so like, does it even feel as satisfying? Like when you, I mean, when they win, or does it just like loses every year? Or no, but (laughs) but you know how sweet. No, but the the one year when we're actually good, like (laughs) it feels so good. Like it feels so sweet. Like it's just like oh, it's finally. Like it's just so. It's just like it means so much more. Well, I mean, like you already know my takes on basketball. You know, wherever LeBron goes, I go. Everywhere else, you know, I'm I'm pretty steady with my teams. But it is very satisfying when LeBron wins a ring. Yes, to answer your question, it's very satisfying. Which I mean, it's, I wouldn't it's, hate. Like you don't get bored. Like it's like Patriots fans. Like you don't get fucking bored. Like. You don't get- <laughs> Yo, honestly, right? Yo, switching to baseball real quick, man. Yo, Yankees, right? We were so spoiled growing up. Yeah. Look at this draw we're in since '09. Yeah. I, I was a freshman in high school. I went to that championship parade. I'm feeling what other fans feel now. I can't say I'm a spoiled Yankee fan anymore because look, uh, we're, we haven't been winning. We have not been winning at all. So I now I understand. Yeah, but we're at least you're Yankee going to the playoffs. Fan. You're not just like bottom yeah, of the league. But, you know, those you're two not bottom years of the league. league. Come right, join the I mean, Marlins. Bro. Okay. Listen, man, <laughs> high expectations. We don't. As a Yankee fan, you're not cheering for them to make the playoffs, bro. You, it's a ring or nothing. That's how it is being a Yankee fan. Yeah, but at least it's there. It's not like yeah. me where it's like, I'm already ready for next season. Dude, I'm already pumped for the draft. Like, the draft is like the next big moment for me. Like, I can't. <laughs> I mean, you guys have nothing else to look forward to. So the, I can the, see that the, happening. The draft is the most, well, that and the Jets winning, but. I guess when, when when you're not in the playoffs, I guess you know the transactions are more interesting than the action. I guess on the field, <laughs> exactly. And you got a bet it's it's what you, you it's it's the hope of like oh yes yeah that's good that's a fire move and then you get the guy and he finally <laughs> plays and then they're like fucking trash. Damn, Speaking of fire moves, can we talk about my you know Eastern Conference champions? Okay, my Miami Heat. Making oh. championship moves, okay? Oh. Biggest signing of the year uh, is Udonis Haslam. One year, $2.56 <laughs> million. <Okay. laughs> Biggest right. signing of the year. He's bringing you to another chip. I can guarantee that. He's a glorified coach That's at this point, bro. That guy's not seen coach before. later on. <laughs> but I love him, bro. He's, bro, he's like, here. bring him on as, like, the staff. Then they'll have to put money towards the salary cap for this man. It's like... 
That could be a young know. that because that could be a no, young guy sure that can come true. in. But the thing is, that's a young guy that could come in and like probably do something versus like fuck is Udonis has him. Just put him on the staff. You like him so much, put him on the staff and then save that spot for save somebody to come in. <laughs> but I mean, it's just for two million. I mean, uh, you know, he's a, a respected veteran in the in the locker room. I mean, he's from Miami. Yeah, um, but that's a you know, spot uh, that could be for somebody who's like hungry, who's trying to who, do something. Some, he you never know. Like who? F- some guy from uh, I don't know some school North Dakota. It's better, that's it's gonna better than anyway. what he's doing right now. Like I mean, like, <laughs> he's not. Listen, he's not taking up an important role uh, as far as playtime. Um, you know, I mean, there's other guys that would probably play before him, but that's whatever. Nah, I um, definitely have respect for him. Like, you, like you know, the, the like I respect with him as as a leader. You know what I mean? I see what you mean, though. That's a spot somebody else could possibly have, especially in this moment of time. Uh, you know what I mean? Everyone deserves an opportunity, you know, hard to make an NBA, you know, in every spot literally counts. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, back up, back up. Look at I mean? Whiteside. When I mean, Whiteside was he came from nothing. I mean, he was undrafted. He was just it ended up being just a, something that just hit. And I think yeah. obviously you have a better chance of something like that happening versus keeping this guy on your team. Like I get that you like him, but if he's getting no playing time, just put him on the staff. Like he can still be that okay, guy. What, what else is going on with the Heat game? What other big moves you guys? Well, made? Uh, you let's got? see. Uh, we signed Bam Adebayo, five year, uh, one hundred sixty three million oh, extension. We got the big. So they invested. They're investing big in Bam Adebayo. Um. Going Dragic one year eighteen million, which is kind of expected. Uh, you know, is really want to go? Yeah, yo, uh, you know, Jimmy was trying to keep him, keep him on. But just based on all the moves, you know, Goran Dragic, Maya Leonard, uh, Gabe Vincent, uh, Kelly Olynyk, they signed a thirteen million player option. Um, they're keeping the all the contracts short because obviously we're looking yeah, for I mean, a so whale. You guys didn't really, guys didn't really change the team essentially. You guys yeah. kind of kept. There were some players that left. Uh, I think DJJ, uh, Derek Jones Jr. went to another team. I forget. Uh, I think he signed with oh the Trailblazers. Um, so some there's some players that uh, uh, left. I think the biggest the uh, biggest deal was the draft. This guy, uh, Precious Precious, I can't even say his last name. I mean, uh, Achi Achiwa Achiwa. Well, what which, is he? Was his position? Uh, I think he's a four. He was coming out of uh, Kentucky. I don't know because I don't follow his college basketball. But everything that uh, I've heard from all the experts, they said that uh, this guy is like heat culture. He's, you know, he's a worker. Kind of keep your head uh, head down, nose down. Um, so uh, it looks like just based on uh, all the moves that the Heat made, um, signing like Gordon Dragic one year, uh, a lot of a lot of one year contracts. They're they're trying to keep the books open for next year um, because you know there's there's a whale lurking out there, you know. The guy is the named, named Giannis. <laughs> yeah, is that the whale? Is that is that the Greek whale you're talking about? You're referring yes. to a shark. So here's yeah. an important date. Here's an important date to look out in the NBA because Giannis, uh, he has a, he can sign a player extension, but um, if he doesn't sign it within by I think December 21st, is it December 20th? December 21st. If he doesn't re up uh, on you know extending his current contract, that makes him available for free agency. So he'll he'll. Not, right now we're just waiting and watching. Uh, I still haven't checked the social media, but he hasn't. He has not followed any the Bucks organization, whatever. Um, but the Bucks made some moves. Uh, I think they got Drew Holiday, Sam Merrill, DJ Augustine. Uh, they signed some players. Obviously, they're trying to make moves to keep him. Um, so yeah, the Heat they're staying open for 2021. I don't think they're going to make any major moves. I was very worried, you know, with a lot of. Uh, you know, a lot of conversation was, you know, uh, uh, there was rumors uh, Westbrook to Miami or Harden to Miami. And I was like, Whoa. oh, my God. We're, we're going to talk about that next. <laughs> now, Westbrook. Wait, we're going to talk about him. Uh, what are we talking about then, right now? Quick, quick I mean, question they, for you, Gabe. Wait, quick question like, for you. How far do you think the Heat are going to go next year? I think I see them right back with, in the finals. With the, East, with the East strengthening. And all the stars are coming to the East now. And you got KD recovering back on the Nets. Where do you, realistically, where do you think? If they don't make it to, to the finals, the, if they don't make it to the, if they don't make it to the semifinals, it'll be a disappointing season. How about that? Like the conference All finals, the right. uh, semifinals, semifinals. So the, Eastern conference, uh, semifinals, the minimum. That's the minimum. Wait, the uh, minimum. The Eastern you know, Conference semifinal. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that you want to at least get out of the first round. Yeah, at least the two. At least out of two. Yeah, I mean, so, I would. I, I would like them to get to the what I honestly expect them to make it to the Eastern Conference Final, and I think they're going to have a 
a hard time in the semifinals. And whoever they end up facing in the uh, the conference finals, I, I would have liked to see them get bigger. I think that was always the biggest problem with the Heat. It's like they don't really dominate the paint that much. But I think the games kind of changed a little bit. I mean, everybody's spread out now. You know what I mean? Yeah, so but they were losing. Really, I mean, look at I mean, the look at the yeah, Lakers on rebounds. You're right, you need that balance. Though. Well, I mean, I mean the Lakers the biggest, destroyed them on rebounds. Like they just couldn't get any. I mean, but they they were a shooting team. If you think about it, um, you know, with Duncan Robinson, with Jay Crowder, who actually I think he went to another team. Uh, they didn't re, they didn't re up his contract. Um, these guys were shooters. You know what I mean? They were spread out. You know. On, on on the edge. That was their primary uh, source. There was really no download. Sometimes they would go when they would go big. Maybe have like Kelly Olynyk, who's all, he can. He's a spotty shooter. Sometimes when I mean, he's shooting well, he's doing well. But um, I don't th- really think of him as a, a deep threat. Um, yeah, but you got to so, look at the if I mean, you're going to make to the finals, games, you got to look at big games from Jimmy. Not so big games from Jimmy. Uh, they, they got beat up by the Lakers, man. The size and everything, it was literally too much. It was, it was a lot, dude. I'm telling you. And then if you're going to come in there and now they, and then they, they hurt. Listen, they were hurt, bro. When you lose Gordon Dragic, who is such, he's so key and so pivotal. He's like one of those underrated players right now, as far as, you know, he maybe he's not like an elite player, but he's definitely a player that like pushes the teams and he he gives them uh, that push and he can kind of push the floor when they need to get kind of more up tempo. And, you know, to lose him and to lose Bam for a game or so. I mean that was major. I mean, like I said, I think we talked about before. Yeah, like no, for, sure, for the Heat, for, sure. for the Heat to win, they had to play perfect. And when you lose two of your best players on the team, and then yeah, you're going against a strong LA team, um, yeah. But no you way, needed but, you needed the Heat to play perfect, and you needed the Lakers not to play that well. Yeah, I don't think toe to toe. If both teams had a really good game, I don't know if the Heat would come up on top. I mean, the Lakers are just a more physical team. I mean, I just, I, I mean, obviously. I, I just felt like they should have got – this doesn't look like the year. Obviously, like you said, there's tons of one-year deal. They got a bunch of one-year deals. The only one they really got a full multi-year contract was Bam. Bam. So, I mean, maybe Barney. Pat Riley's got something thinking next year. Like, you know, I think they're still building. I don't think they're ready to win right now. I think they're going to be competitors. I don't, I don't see for next season for sure. Maybe, But they're definitely going to – they're going to be – they're going to be contenders. Like, they're going to be – they're going to be up there, but I don't think they're a favorite yet. I think they still got a stuff and to they, work on. Then again, we didn't expect this last season, and look what they did. They showed out, so you never yeah. know. Now, moving on to that Westbrook. But with a lot of Westbrook lucky a lot of lucky for stuff. John Wall, bro. How you feel about that? <laughs> was that Did that do anything to either team, bro? That's um, pretty much. I, I was saying it's pretty much an equal trade, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it did much because, you know, uh, John Wall being out of injury, I heard something like ridiculous. Like he's been out, he hasn't played in like 700 days or something because, uh, you know, uh, uh, of injuries and his Achilles. Was, I was like, going to say, I haven't Miami heard him. Too. I was going to say, because I feel like I haven't heard John Wall in a while. I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he, was injured. he hasn't been playing. Yeah. yeah he's, you know. When I saw um, that shit, I was like, fuck. Like, damn, what happened yeah. to John Wall? I was like, I completely forgot about that guy. And John Wall is not a bad player. Um, you know, I, I think as far as his trade, I, I don't. Um, you know, it's pretty even trade because you got two disgruntled, two two guys with big ass contracts, and they're disgruntled. They want to get away from the team. You know, they don't like the ownership anymore. So, I mean, I guess it's a good trade because for them, because they get out of a bad situation they want to be in. Um, I think maybe the higher upside is maybe. Uh, you know, I would rather probably have Westbrook rather than John Wall. One hundred percent. But, but you know. Like I said, I was very scared because there's rumors of like, oh, Westbrook might come to Miami. I'm like, oh my god, that would be so That's terrible. Not I don't he's such that. an inefficient player. Like he, he's he's like a for the the high amount of volume that he shoots is not very efficient. You know, even though he's an exciting player, and um, it's just like man, you think him, he, and, he, uh, him and Bill gonna make a good combo? They gonna make a good duo? I think they can. I think they can make it work. I, I gotta look at their other rosters. Uh, Are they gonna the make the playoffs? Team, uh, I mean, I think they're going to be a little bit better off than last year. I think I mean, they're going to make it. They might squeeze in like a seven. Yeah, they did play without John Wall last season. Now you're acquiring Westbrook, so I mean, it's definitely going to make a difference. And, I, uh, and not obviously, you, field, you didn't know. Obviously, you don't know how John Wall's going to come back. Too. I mean, God knows. Yeah, that. that's a big, big question mark. You don't know how he's going to play. Is he gonna Westbrook, at least you know what you're getting. You know you're going to get probably. He's going to go there and be the guy. Mostly, yeah. he's going to be the number one. So they. They might make a little bit of a a splash in the playoffs. Oh, guess, uh, the Knicks didn't want to give him a max, huh? 
<laughs> nobody, I swear nobody wants to play go for the Knicks, Knicks, bro. bro. Nobody wants I to play. I swear he was gonna go to the Knicks. <laughs> Bro, I mean, and, that, that, and that's that's the thing that sucks about these guys. They have these bloated contracts. They sign for these long years and a lot of money. And if you got a movie, obviously the NBA ha- has to be equal. Uh, the money has to match up. So, um, I mean, it's kind of a whatever trade. I don't think any team necessarily got super better. Like, oh, all of a sudden Houston's going to be in the finals. I don't really necessarily see that. But Houston's going to be the same it. team. They're going to be the yeah. same team. If not, maybe a little worse. They're probably they're slowly declining. But as far as, you know, Washington, I mean, they, like you said, they might sneak in a, a bottom seed. Now, I still think in the East, the, the, te- the best teams are still the best teams that were last year. It's going to be the Bucks, the Celtics, the Heat, right. and, um, oh, fuck, I just forgot. What the hell's going to You got to throw in the Nets. The KD's Pacers. Back, baby. The Pacers. Maybe we'll see, we'll see, you know, we'll see where the Nets fall. I, I, I think as far as the Heat, because I'm such a Heat fan, um, they're, they're probably like the third or fourth best team in the East. But we'll see what Bro- what Brooklyn can do. They can put together some wins and run on the team. I mean, that's only again. Yeah, I have to watch the game. I have to, I'm have to see. You know what I mean? To, to the East is going to be really competitive, man. I'm telling you, like it's going to be really good. I mean, like you said, you have the Celtics, you have the Bucks, the Heat. Um, oh, 76ers. That's what I meant to say. The Sixers. Yeah, you, you, you have the Sixers. The yeah, you have you have the Sixers on the team. What'd you say? No, let me oh, finish. I, I got. I, I got Nah, how, how no. about them Hornets? How the about the Hornets? Hornets? First off, you don't know what you're getting with Lamelo, and then they moves. they gave Gordon Dragic this ridiculous contract Hayward. for doing nothing. Hey, hey, yeah, Hayward. yeah, my bad, my bad, mess up, Hayward. This ridiculous contract for broken ankles. As soon as I mean, wa- wobbling yeah, down the court, yeah. got a hundred million dollars. They have a, a lot of offensive firepower. I would say I don't know how the defense is going to go. But They're I not feel making like offensively, the playoffs. these guys, they have a chance to make the playoffs for sure. Dude, like, look, like, eight, let me seven, let me finish the list. Seven, seven, eight, well, well, let me think. Let me see. Okay, so we got the Celtics, Raptors, Pacers, Nets, uh, Heat, um, the Sixers. That's seven teams right there. And maybe the, the Magic, Bucks. they might get a little better. Oh, and the Bucks. You got nine. Well, the Magic, yeah. Uh, Magic is iffy, but like, yeah, you got the Bucks. You got eight. Probably pretty. Most I, I would say four, four, four. Oh, and then you got Washington. I mean, who knows what's going to happen with Westbrook? I don't think they're going to make it, but they're definitely going to be in the mix somehow in the hunt. Yeah, they, I think you got the top four. Like I said, you know, Heat, Sixers, Bucks, and um, Celtics are the. De- I think the four definite like top contenders. Like you know, as far as top four, and then everybody's just going to fall in. We'll see how the season works out. You know what I mean? Um, we're having a shortened season. It's going to start. Uh, I think Christmas is when they're trying to start. I See, think that's that the guy. Beginning. What's that guy's name? It has a from the Pacers. His uh, uh, Oladipo. Yeah, Oladipo. See if he comes. Yeah, back. they were seeing if he was because he's very friendly. I guess with uh, I, I think he does he share an agent. I I forget what his Miami connection is, but he's very friendly with a, a lot of the players uh, on the Miami Heat. And there was trades like, oh, they're going to trade for him this year. Um, but he had to come out with a statement on 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 online that like, hey, I'm. I'm still fulfilling my contract. I'm here with the Pacers. Yeah, I want the Pacers to win. Yeah, he's doing all the nice things. Rules, so. I tell you yeah, what, you're yeah. really seeing you're yeah. really seeing a switch, man. With the the Western Conference has held dominance for probably 15 you know, years. Gabe, Gabe's right. Gabe's right with his connection to to Miami because uh, not too long ago, right before all quarantine started, probably like January, February, he was out here in Miami. Yeah, right here, they come out here. He was at uh he was at finish line giving out bags and books and stuff for students. So Oladipo was out here. Yeah, I think he's very. I think he's very friendly with uh, um, very friendly with like Dwayne Wade, um, and I think he's close to he's close to some of the players on the team already. So there was rumors that he he might be you know they, he might be an addition, which uh, he's not a bad player, but I don't think he would have added anything to to the thing. But you know, whatever, we'll see, man. We'll see. We'll see what happens as, as far as the Eastern Conference. Um, well, that's the same. Moves. You're, you're really yeah. seeing the tides turn, man, with the Western Conference and the Eastern Conference. Yeah. I swear, I mean, pretty much my entire life, the Western Conference has been like the conference. Um, and it, yeah. yeah, it's been dominant. Yeah, it and now you're really starting to see things like turn around. The LeBron I'm, effect. I'll tell you that. You should write that definition down. It's called the LeBron effect. <laughs> I'm going to teach you about that. 
Yeah, he makes everybody in the bottom half the of the Cavaliers, Western man. Conference. It's, it's the LeBron effect. He goes to the West, and everybody's escaping the West. How do you feel about that? <laughs> LeBron is his own industry, bro. He, he's his well, own industry. I mean, you look, like, you look early in his career. I, I would say early, like late 2000s, uh, mid to late 2000s, it was pretty equal because the Eastern Conference was pretty dominant back then, too. Yeah, All the teams out there. Usually the Western, there's always a Western yeah. lean. It, it's always so tough because I never ever get to watch a lot of the Western, uh, like games. And we'll see how now, especially now because of quarantine, um, they're trying to do a four city bubble thing, and they're not trying to do cross like any interleague, whatever. They're just going to be East Coast and West Coast on its own little bubble, two little city bubbles. That's and boring. Uh, it's like I don't know. Yeah, I always have a keeping everybody in Orlando again. Nah, that's nah. not feasible. Not for a full season with every single team. Nah. Last time they only cut it to the teams that were potentially making the playoffs. Yeah. But, so I mean, we'll see how the season goes. I mean, I- I'm very interested in the NBA. I mean, I think the bubble was a success, and uh, you know, it's gonna, you know, it- it'll be East and West until we get to the finals, and and then we'll see who who wins it out from there. So well, you know what I NBA, wish they probably did like. Like maybe like for those four city bubbles, like maybe one quarter of this, the first quarter of the season, you have like these certain groups facing against each other. Then the second quarter, like you shuffle things up and then they go uh, you know, like, 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 like a couple boring. months at a time. You have the same teams going at it. That's what they're doing now. The beginning. Yeah. That's what they're doing now, though. Yo, I always, I always thought the NBA would be better if they made it more like soccer and, and the fact that like. They should get rid of East Coast and West Coast because it doesn't make like a damn difference. Like, what? What is? Maybe you know. Back Their divisions in the day when, are pointless. The divisions yeah. in basketball are pointless. And like, it maybe it made sense like back in the day because you know you had to fly and you know, fucking planes with propellers and shit. But uh, nowadays, I, I don't think it makes any more sense. Like I said, it, it was always h- tough for me to watch a uh, West Coast team being from Miami because it's just so damn late. Like, I'm gonna be staying up to one o'clock in the morning to watch fucking Nuggets. Trailblazers, I'm like, nah. I mean, I'll, I'll, yeah, I understand yeah. if you got curfew, you know, you couldn't watch those 10 o'clock games. You know? <laughs> like, well, night, night early. Game still got curfew. You gotta, yeah, you're still, <laughs> okay, you're still not able to watch those games. You know? But if they got rid of, if, if this is like a just a thing, this is just a random thought I had. If they got rid of East and West and they just it had it just a whole list and the top 16 teams went, you know, it would be more competitive. Like, I would want to watch Miami play the Lakers, you know, on a regular season game because you know yeah, uh, they play they play so many teams teams uh, teams in the regular season that the games don't matter. I'm like, oh, okay, it don't y'all. matter. It'll if it's not a yeah, if it's not I like, East Coast team, I don't care. You know, yeah, what I mean? that's I li- kind of the attitude I have. I like the like how baseball and football has an NFC AFC, and then you have teams scattered around. Uh, hockey and basketball still do this East and West thing, and uh, I don't really like that. Like, I don't know. I think there's a certain element to to moving around that change. like you know when a team goes to the west coast like if you're an east coast team going to the west coast like that's kind of a big deal yeah. like that's a, good, that's a big advantage it, it adds a certain element to it yeah that. and that was crazy that happened in nfl too i think la i think it was, was it the rams they had like the furthest they flew the furthest to play games like they play like i think the the giants and they played some other, like like the lions or something they had like the furthest flight to get to games well that was a problem with the the london games yeah, like, that's another thing too. Yeah, yeah, it, it disrupts so much of 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 the regular season games. But well, um, that's just a random thought I had. Yeah, that's just a random thought I had about NBA. It would be more, so much more competitive. Like I said, I only watch because I watch the Miami Heat. If they're playing the East Coast team, I'm probably more likely to watch it. But if it's West Coast, I'm like, okay, whatever. They travel to fucking uh, you know Sacramento and they lost. It doesn't matter because they're a West Coast team. It doesn't matter to the record. I just care about the East Coast record. But if they got yeah. rid of the illusion of like East first West Coast, like I would be into the games more to watch. I'm like, yo, this game freaking counts. I know the regular season game, but if they lose um, this game, they, yeah. they're gonna drop. You know, from whatever twelve to fourteen, or um, I wish they made the divisions matter. Basketball is the only yeah, sport where it doesn't matter. It, like yeah. everything else is so important. Hockey, it's important. Football, it's important. Football, baseball, baseball. you got to win your division. You win your division, you're in. Like, and it, yeah. you build this rivalry. And I think that's what like basketball is missing. It's missing like this, like serious, like rivalry, especially with like local teams. Like you, 
Like you want to see like who's in the Heat? I don't even know the Heat's division. Don't they got like the Sixers? Our, our rivals, yeah, our rivals are like Indiana. We don't like Indiana. We don't like no damn Knicks, but they suck so bad. They're so irrelevant. It's not even like it's not even anything worth noting. About. But Indiana oh, gave us a, t- a tough when the big three around. Indiana gave us tough tough games. I hate Reggie Miller. Um, you know the Bucks now because they got competitive. They got Giannis, and they're like the number one team. So obviously, number one has got to be on the sideline on the fucking radar. Um, also, East Coast, who I'm thinking? I mean, Celtics, because they're historically the most winning team. They're like the Yankees of the East, of uh, the East Conference. I mean, uh, I would just, I would just like it to mean something, like, because I would like wild cards, honestly. Like, I, I really like that system. Like, and I think every other sport's got it right. I mean, well, except for, um, yeah, every other sport's kind of got it right. Like, I, I like this yeah. idea of, like, you got to win your division. It, it I think it builds these rivalries amongst these teams within their division. And then you have these wild cards where it's like you might have lost your division because you might have somebody really good in there, but you still did good. Or maybe pull the top two. Because how many divisions are there in basketball? Three on each side? Six Oh, uh, I think four. I think there's four. There's three? Three? I don't remember. I can't remember the top of my head. But yeah, if they did like let me look. maybe like the top two, and then in your division, and then like uh, two wild cards, and then you got eight teams right there. Like I don't know. I think it would be interesting if they did something. But yeah, it is three, three per. Yeah, I thought so. I thought it was five per division. Yeah. So if they did like, I would like that a lot. Yeah. I mean, if you, you bring in like the top two, and then you have two wild cards or. Yeah, I, I I like that but, uh, system. I think it it builds. I think it's good. Whatever. Where did JoJo go? JoJo just I don't know. left, bro. This man just disappeared. What's going on? What's good? I'm right. He here. switched. What happened? Yo, JoJo, can we talk about the jerseys? Which jerseys uh you like so far coming out the NBA? Oh, that they're facts. Facts. Because I know that facts. that's gonna be coming out in the Nike store soon. So. Oh, you already know I'm going to cop the Heat one. But uh, just to go over these City Edition jerseys, I think it's a dope concept Nike brought in. You know, bring in different tastes, different flavors, you know, of, of like every city's, you know, environment. Like, you know, Brooklyn did it big with the Big E one. Like, you know, it, it really feels like you're representing your home, your city. And everybody knows about that Vice Wave. Yeah. And we got, what, the fifth installment coming out. Um vice versa it's going to be a gradient of the vice colors so basically pink blending into the blue i got all the jerseys right here so oh you pulled them out the i didn't even know you pulled them oh, out is that yeah. why you, is that why you went right on? <laughs> bro the orlando one looks stupid Already. why is bro, the orlando one orange jerseys. I want you guys to pick which one you think is the best to be honest so we got the original we got the that's OG. my favorite dog the white one the original one. is my favorite that's my favorite. Really? I, I can't, I, I unfortunately, I got in the white, white side. side. I know. You know. I don't have to wait, you know, but still, Terrible. you know. Get that out of here. Uh, 21's a nice right. number, but for it to have white side, we that got sucks. <laughs> number two, we got Midnight Vice. That's my favorite. Black. That one's, clean, that one's right? the coolest. It's a classic look. It's a clean I like, look. I, I like black. I like black. I think it's got that way. That was his last year, I think. The, All the right. black. Number three, we got Sunset Vice. I like not that my one. Favorite. Not, not my, my favorite. That and black, my top two. Pepto Bismol is not my favorite. When I need to use Pepto Bismol, because I'm sick. I need to throw up. It's fire. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> last city's edition, that Vice Wave, that Gale blue, blue jersey. Blue is an upgrade from pink. I don't it's like blue that blue. Man. Pink. I really don't like the blue. Oh no, I think it looks way better than the pink one, bro. This oh, yeah. Mavericks so that, jersey, the Mavericks one, jersey looks fire. Mavs. The Mavs jersey looks dope. I fuck with. Oh, the I'm, looking, I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking at a list of these. Yeah, I'll send you the link in the chat. This looks kind of. It gives you a list. Copy. The Lakers didn't have a bad one either. I think the Lakers got a white. It has white with blue letters and like gray number. Yeah, it's, a, um, it's like a throwback one. It's a throwback. Yeah. One. Um, it, it's definitely that one looks dope. Like I'm like, oh, okay, that looks pretty good because you know you used to seeing the purple and the yellow. Um, but that that one's definitely pretty nice. I thought one was pretty whack is the yeah. Bucks. The Bucks had like a blue. It's like a. A light blue and then like a dark, like midnight blue. I thought that should look whack as hell. It's supposed to be like Great Lakes or whatever the hell. I don't know. Uh, the Clippers the, look sick. I sent. I just sent the link. Like the Clippers look pretty cool. Uh, that's brought out the throwback ones as well. Houston's that's like white and blue. But the Vice always kills Yo, me. They, Chi- they, Chicago's is pretty oh, sick. Uh, 
Oh, for sure, bro. Miami always comes you know, out with, I think, the dopest back, one. The Timberwolves Which had, one? Uh, had a great one last year. Timberwolves, yeah, I think I think yeah, that, that purple and black one. one. Yeah, that one's pretty, yeah. All right, this picture, I'm looking at the Vice jerseys. Again, the new ones. Actually, I do kind of like them a little bit. I think the first picture I saw was kind of ugly. Oh, yeah, the Brooklyn Nets well, one's pretty you, dope. The Brooklyn Nets one's pretty good. You got to copy person, man. It's different. You got to copy yep. that Vice one in person. I guarantee you, both of you are going to end up buying the... Guarantee. The Bro, how did the Me- the they, they rank Sports Illustrated ranked Memphis as the best jersey? Like that's some bullshit. I mean, it's cool, Honestly, but it's Hornets, not like the Hornets best. Clean, too. The new Hornets jersey are clean. But yeah, man, you got teams. You got teams like Boston and New York. They keep it real simple. They don't really do. Yeah, like Toronto's shows. is pretty they're, cool. They're kind of scared to go out the box. Tor- Toronto's is pretty the good. OVO OVO theme. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I like Chicago's. Like Chicago that. looks like that old school, like 1920s, like speakeasy, like type of vibe. Like that's pretty dope. <sighs> the 76ers, like I, 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 they always throw in that old school classic, like Philly kind of city vibe. Like I get the concept. I don't know. I'm just not a fan of it. Yeah. It's not a fan. I don't. I don't really like the concept. The Warriors. But, uh, it's, it's, it looks like the original jerseys. But JoJo, have you seen any new ones? Are they like stocking up in uh, Nike? Like any? jerseys or shirts like that yeah so that's that's what i was gonna say so the the heat officially dropped it midnight last night okay dope and uh, it's, it's on nike right now in the app it says coming soon so they should if it's not released by now uh probably tomorrow yeah i'd say by tomorrow or saturday it's gonna drop which you already know i'm gonna hit that purchase button <laughs> add the collection. you're gonna yeah, have I'm, all of them i'm sure they're gonna have it in the store like at at the triple a but uh It'll yeah. probably be and Nikes around the world. Like I mean, like a little bit later then. Bro, the Sixers like, ones make no sense. It just looks like a bunch of houses. Like I, I I'm, I'm looking. It, I'm telling you, bro. I'm, it, I'm not a fan makes, of it. It makes yeah, no sense. <laughs> they got they Iverson on here. They, they make. They just make. The Sixers one is the black one, dude. Right? It's like black and gray. It has like houses on it. Like, bro, they yeah. just gotta bring back the the OG black one, bro. Iverson, bro. I just always thought back. those were sick. I never understood why they went back to like the throwback jerseys. That never made sense to me. I always thought the seven and the six with the little basketball and like the the blue and the that I ha- I used to have an old Iverson jersey, the blue alternate jersey. I always thought the blue and the Fire. black ones were sick. I Fire. never understood why they changed that. The court was Bro, dope. Really? This, Some of the only teams that brought back the OG was like Memphis last year. Toronto brought it back. I think Utah brought back. Yo, you know who's bringing back their, their OG uniform? The Spurs. Look it up. Spurs. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. First top two for uh, City Edition jerseys. I got Heat at one and I got Spurs at two. Honestly, the Nuggets uh, is pretty cool. The Spurs, I, I just saw Utah is pretty dope. I really like that clip. Just, the Orlando Magic one is so stupid. I don't know why. Why is it orange? Yeah. Like I don't get that. <laughs> orange. I don't yeah, like that no, orange. No. I, I, Orlando. Yeah, the San, little, San Antonio like is pretty orange. dope. I like San, San, no, San Antonio. They got oranges on deck. They got oranges on deck. <laughs> I guess so. Is that why? And you stand outside a, a fruit stand. I don't understand orange. why they. <laughs> I don't understand why they put the Hornets as number four. Like that doesn't. I mean, it looks kind of basic. Like it's not ugly. It's who, like, who rated these? Who rated these? Sports Illustrated. Yeah, look at the author. Net. You gotta look who who signed. <laughs> JoJo Gomez. <laughs> JoJo. <laughs> I don't. Okay, what? Lakers. Lakers obviously played like paid these people because it's literally the same jersey, just blue. Like, a, yeah. It's it looks good, man. It looks good. I think. It's, bro, I why think are they hyping up Memphis so hard? Like, the, it's not bad, but it's not like the best. Like, yeah. Utah's for, the Trailblazers is pretty cool too. Yo, can we we get can we get into this NFL though? All right, let's get it. What's up? Yo, so let's talk about your vice jerseys. Yeah, <laughs> the vice jerseys. Um, just getting into NFL because you know what we're in week thirteen. Um, pretty much the the playoffs. We kind of know who the good teams are. I, I'm pretty sure like the top five, six teams. We kind of know who are going to be in there. AFC's um, close. Some NFC's teams. close. NFC is super close. Yeah. Um, right now we got AFC, uh, in the NFC, we got Vikings, Bears, 49ers, Lions. They're still in the bubble. So they're still trying to make it into those seven, eight spots. My bad. Uh, I meant to say a- AFC. AFC is really close. Oh, AFC is, yeah. Raiders, Ravens, Patriots, and Broncos. I, so, I feel so bad for JoJo's Broncos because, you know, the last game. Yo. Yo. Let's not talk about <laughs> Dang, I, was hoping, I was hoping you guys would bring that up. 
I know. Looking the other way, right? bro. Jim, yo, they should uh, put me in as QB, bro. They John, John Harbaugh's in bed with Roger Goodell because how in the fuck did they get delayed like six days, but the Broncos are forced to play this like that day, like they with a practice squad wide receiver who hasn't thrown a football since like fucking high school, like. I heard somebody was, put up. There was like, if you, if you ever want to see a high school star like play in the NFL, just watch that Broncos game. Like, <laughs> I was like, wow. But yeah, I, I mean, was, I thought, to lose three quarterbacks like that, that's crazy. Crazy as hell. To lose four, three quarterbacks I think. like yeah, that, it was four. Yeah, bro, that's insane. And, and they're, they're saying like the assistant coach used to uh, boy Bortles. Play quarterback in college, have that man out there. Yeah, but they wouldn't let him. Do the water boy in there. <laughs> Maybe you know, the, fun- the funniest thing on Twitter I saw was uh uh what's his name? Damn, uh Miller. Was it I wanna say one I wanna say Vontae Miller. No, Von Miller. Von, Von Miller went Von on Twitter. Miller. Von, uh, Von Miller on Twitter. And it was just it was the Batman. It was uh uh Michael Keaton's Batman where the signal turns on and he's just like looking up at the sign like he was gonna like fucking be- play quarterback. <laughs> it was like the funniest shit I ever saw, dog. Oh, well, that's your boy Von Elway. <laughs> Von Elway, yeah. I mean, let's be Von honest. Elway. Elway. I mean, let's be honest. The Broncos haven't had a quarterback since week one, so. That's true. Like, <laughs> like lock, <laughs> lock, I mean. That's the only I reason saw, why Taysom Hill played well. Kind of not even really play well. The only reason why they won is because they had no quarterback. They have a couple good receivers. I mean, I think what, is, was Lindsay, he hasn't been playing, has he? Lindsay? The, uh, run, the running back? Yeah, he was running fucking wildcat because they had no quarter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they had that guy stop. He's like, yo, fuck this guy. He can't throw the football to save his life. They started running wildcats with like two like running back uh, formation. Like it was the fucking shit, like doing read option with running backs. I was like, I, I dude, I've never seen some shit like this before. Their wide receivers are okay. Like they got they got a couple, you know, Sutton, Jerry Judy, if he can catch the ball, if he decides he wants to start catching the ball, the wide receiver. If he decides he <laughs> um, they got, bro, like that, bro. bro, you know who they should have ringed up? <laughs> no, you know yeah. you know who they should have ringed up? Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow. <laughs> yeah, <bro. laughs> Tim Tebow, like a comeback. Yo, imagine you seen, Tim, you seen, you seen Tim oh. Tebow. Just running down the fucking locker room. Yeah, like, yo, oh, he's back. That, that he's would have been so dope to see Tebow come back. <laughs> uh, imagine he won the game too, and he brings him to bro, the playoffs. I think he, he won him a game. I think they, 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 they would have beat it. They would have built a statue, bro. They would have built a fucking statue, bro. If he, he would have won that game for them. <laughs> I think he he won a game in overtime. Did he beat the Steelers in overtime? He beat some team they in beat, overtime. They beat the Steelers in the playoffs. It was like one long ass pass. Like it was an overtime. Was it, the, it was like was six it the, yards. Was it the Steelers? I, I it was, it the wasn't team. a deep ball. I mean, he threw it to but Demarius it was Thomas. It was, how it was, was his a, name? Demarius Thomas, I think it was. Yeah. Thomas yeah. Said, and yeah. He, they threw it. He threw it like 20 yards and then he like ran it for like 60. He just ran. Yeah. yeah. But we've seen that experiment, bro. We I, think it was, I think it was the Steelers. <laughs> I think they beat the Steelers. I know the next week they got fucking smoked and I think it was against the oh, Patriots. I think it was the Patriots. But yeah, man. I mean, as far as these teams, like I, I'm pretty sure, like in the AFC, we kind of know who the teams are. Um, you know, I don't know, man. Teams- I really don't know. I think the AFC, we we don't know. I mean, are the Dolphins going to stay in there? Yeah, I mean, can the Ravens? Do you think, think the Ra- are the Ravens still in the hunt, or are they are they they're they're on the bubble because right now, because the Ste- obviously the Steelers are the best team. Um, I think it's a perfect record. Um, yeah, Cleveland's probably going to make it. I think Cleveland's eight and three or something. Cleveland's yeah, they're probably going to make it. Which is shocking. I feel like they played yeah, so they much suck, worse. <laughs> if, you look at Cle- if you look at Cleveland's plus minus, like their differential points, like how many points you score and how many points get scored on you, they're like in the minus, but they're somehow going to make the playoffs anyways. I don't Bro, think they're, they're, the, they're the worst eight and three team I've ever seen. I know. Um, <laughs> Like I, you, I do not feel comfortable with them being eight and three. It's a yeah. they, they look like I a felt that way when the, the I felt that and, way when the Bears were fucking five and zero. Oh. I was like, what in the fuck is the what is going on? And Nick but, Foles got benched again. Yeah. Oh shit. But I, I think we pretty much know who the teams are as far as I mean, like we kind of know who's pretty good. Like we know who's like for real. Uh, or but teams we who don't can, know like, who's gonna make it. Are the Dolphins still gonna do it? The Dolphins are, I think they're going to make the not playoffs. Gonna do it. They're going to make a run. They're going to make a run. I'm saying they'll make it out the first round. Yo, what happened to your boy Tua? Right, listen, what I, know, your boy Tua? I know this was two weeks ago. I know this is two weeks ago. Are we going to bring up the fact that my Broncos beat your Dolphins? Or are you just going to shy away from that? Listen, 
Here's the thing, man. When you travel, you have to go that far high, okay? Call it the mile high city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. You know, it's hard uh-huh. to breathe, you know, your, yeah. your cardio. It, it was hard. <laughs> it was hard for Fitzpatrick to throw that uh, interception in the red zone. I mean, I, I, I wanted the Dolphins to win that game. Not to say the Broncos are a bad team. Even I, can't not- bl- I, I can't believe the Dolphins lost that. Listen, it's an away game. They're traveling on the road. I mean, I would love for them to win. Yeah. Um, now they took them out. They, sh- they shouldn't they have done that. They shouldn't have took them out. That was the – I get why they did that, but, like, yeah, that is a very – That's a very – No, but that's a, ve- that's a very – integral part in a rookie's career is like you gotta be able to go through adversity and like how else is like what what's gonna happen again when they go through a tough moment when they end up making the playoffs like they're just gonna pull him out and put in Fitzpatrick you gotta put him in there you gotta see what he got if he shits the bed he shits the bed but he, he's gotta learn he, you gotta put him in these uncomfortable situations and force it where he's gotta be forced to make plays you can't just have Fitzpatrick there just ready to go at both the hand like I get I mean, that he wants to win I get it but like this guy's a rookie, and I think that was a very important moment for him to like, you know, you need to get your shit together. And you well, I mean, something. that's kind of the wake up call, right? It's like, yo, you're not playing well, you, you will sit too. Yeah, I well, know we gave you the job for the last five weeks, but if you're not playing well, you will sit down too. So like, and if there's any player that's ready to sit down on the bench in the middle of a game, it's Tua, because right, because that's what they did with Jalen Hurts and Tua when he was in college, anyway. So it's not like it's not anything he's not used to. Yeah, um, but my thing is like. You don't want it to be like where he he starts playing bad, you immediately bench him. Like you you gotta well, you I gotta mean, play bad and then it's about coming through that adversity and then bounce him back and fucking win in the game. I mean you're not gonna have a perfect game all the time. You're gonna have shit games, but it's a matter yeah. if you can come back at the end. That's what makes Tom Brady so great. That's what makes Peyton Manny so it's what it Aaron Rodgers, it's being able to like look past it. And be like, all right, the first three quarters are ass, but we're going hard as fuck this fourth quarter. I, 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 I can see. Not that uh, you know, I actually, you know, like to. I want to see him play, um, but I can see why Brian Flores took him out. You know, they were stagnant. He's trying to inject, like, change something. Like, if if we're playing and it's not working, let, let's change something and let, let's see what works. Um, so I, I wasn't against it. I mean, it, it's a tough loss because they're an AFC team, um, but still, you know. It's not. I mean, it's not bad. You went on the road. You lost. What whatever, happened to? Um, I thought they said they were starting him against the Jets. Did they just like decide not to? I, I noticed that like while watching the game. I didn't well, he got injured. Uh, I think in practice he injured his thumbs or his hands. Um, so he didn't. Uh, he was. They just they sat him for for injury. Uh, yeah, so I didn't notice it. Him. I didn't notice it till like last minute when I was watching on Red Zone. I was like, oh shit. Yeah, but it's the fucking Jets, so like that's not even like where can you put two? Yeah, like, yeah I almost lost that. I, I was actually kind of rooting that. for the Jets right there. I was like, yo, <laughs> let's go. But fucking Sam yeah, Darnold couldn't, <laughs> bro. Sam Darnold couldn't even fuck a stone into a lake. Like I can. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, uh, as far as like, um, uh, you know, teams. I think we, like I said, we kind of know who who's who's in there. Like uh, as far as NFC, there the Vikings, Bears. Those are pretty good teams. I think the Vikings. I was very down on them early on the season, as far as the NFC. Um, but I think they're a better team now. They're playing a little bit better. Um, they're bad. also they got no QB, the, bro. Yeah, I mean they're playing a little bit better, bro. They got listen that kid Jefferson, Justin Jefferson, their wide receiver. They drafted him from LSU. Oh, so I thought you were kid, talking about the Bears. No, the Vikings. Oh, the Bears. Well, I'll talk about the Bears. I'll talk about the Vikings. I thought, oh, yeah. I was, the Vikings. I yeah. I think the, I think the Vikings have a chance. They're going to face uh, Jacksonville this week, and then they're going to face Tampa. You can win those two games. You're above 500. You're seven and six right there. Yeah. I, I think I think they could they could squeeze in. They had a rough like first like six weeks, but I think they could. I mean, they're showing that they're slowly bouncing back. They're finding a rhythm. It seems like. Yeah. Kirk Cousins had a really bad start, but he seems like he's starting to kind of like he wasn't playing as good as he was last year, obviously. But I think he's starting to like he's starting to clean it up. And then you got Dalvin Cook; he's just heating up. That boy he's a monster, eating. yeah. Oh, he's, this guy, that boy that is man. eating. And that kid, yeah, yo, different. that kid, Justin Jefferson, that wide receiver, he's a beast. Minnesota. Yes, he's a he beast. He's gonna be, bro. He is. He's gonna be special in this league, bro. People, he's gonna have a long career, hopefully uh, without injury. If you know, knock on wood, if you don't get no injuries. But that kid is, he's gonna be special, though. Look out for Justin Jefferson. 
the boy can play. You heard right? it here first. <laughs> you heard it here. Um, but like the Bears too. The Bears. I think the Bears got a great. Um, they got a great defense, um, but their offense is just like nothing, bro. Their offense is nothing. Allen Robinson is a great. Uh, That's player, all they got. Their best player, but as far as like they have no running backs. Montgomery sucks. Their their uh, Cohen is small little guy, not playing well. Um, they went back to Trubisky. Uh, who, I'm so happy. I, I'm. There's uh, nobody more satisfied yeah. to see Nick Foles like shit the bed as much yeah. as me. I can't believe the Browns are so fucking dumb that they actually took on Nick Foles' contract, which is ridiculously overpaid, and gave us a fourth round pick for it. And then just for him to play four games and sit on the bench, like I think is the funniest shit ever. Like I get. I'm just, uh. But yo, so so wait, um, who who is Jacksonville playing? They're playing Minnesota this week, right? Mm-hmm. Did you want to talk about you know your your Jacksonville Jaguars? Did you want to talk about that for a little bit? Talk about. You want to well, talk about? We have fired the first GM of the 2020 season. Thank fucking god! Oh my god! If this guy could write a book about how to keep your job while sucking at it, this would be the guy. I don't know how this guy has kept his job for eight fucking years, eight years, and has one winning season that wasn't even really on him. He has had only, we have none none of his first round picks before 2018 is still on the team. None of his first round picks. He's made a first round pick in 2020. 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, and none of those motherfuckers are in either in the league or on the team. And then 2018, that guy Taven Bryan, he's a piece of shit. He sucks. He just has a good bench, and that guy—that's all they tell is like, "Yo, this guy—he's strong, dog. He's strong." I don't give a fuck about his bench. Like, I don't care. Like, can you sack the fucking quarterback or no? Or can you stuff the run? You can't. Stuff. I don't give a fuck how much you squat. Like, I don't care. <laughs> like I, I just they you they out here. They you they <laughs> it seems like this year's rookies, like they might like do something that might be kind of good, but uh, I guess we'll see. But yeah, I, I'm just so glad to see this guy fired. It was long, long, long overdue. Um, pretty soon our coach is probably going to get fired, Doug Marone. I'm glad to see that happening. Um, it puts us in a really great position to where now we can start looking for some guys. I, my hopes is that we really go after the director of player personnel for the Kansas City Chiefs, and then which will then help convince the Kansas City That'll Chiefs offense, Kansas City Chiefs offensive coordinator um, Eric Benenemy. I can never say this dude's name, but Benenemy. Ben- yeah, ben- ben- yeah, ben- yeah, ben- yeah, I know you're talking. Yeah, because he's definitely a, <laughs> he's a top coach prospect. So if we can get that GM. That helps kind of open the door to bring him in. I think Jacksonville is the most attractive spot for anybody to go to, like by far. I think the 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 Detroit's gonna suck. Like you don't want to go to Detroit. They they're all over the place. They're gonna get a shitty pick. They're, like Jacksonville, we have we're gonna probably have the number two pick. We're gonna have two first round picks. We have the most cap space in all the league, and you're gonna have you're gonna come into this whole thing. You're going to bring in your own coach. You have the youngest team yeah. in the league with a lot of good prospect and a lot of good talent on there. Honestly, like in all honesty, the Jaguars teams, I mean, we've been within a touchdown, even though we're one in 11, we've been within a touchdown the past five to six games, I believe. So we're very competitive and we got a lot of young talent on there. So if we can get somebody who knows what the fuck they're doing and doesn't just play with Legos in their office, like we can actually like, we can actually do something. You sign some free agents, you get a good coach with a good culture. You bring this new, this new era in. And I, I really hope shot Khan knows uh, the Jaguars owner shot Khan knows what the fuck they're doing, but his I mean, track we'll record, see. it doesn't seem yeah. like it. So right. you heard I, it I here, like- folks, uh, <laughs> Jacksonville's finest. You heard it here from uh, Julian <laughs> Jacksonville's finest. Here we go. Come to Jacks. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, that's going to be tough, bro. If you want somebody to leave Kansas City, which obviously they're Super Bowl champions, probably going to go to Super Bowl again. I mean, that's yeah, going to be to tough make, for somebody. Yeah, for but to make more money in a higher me. position. And, I mean, it's and you're, in a, you're in a, like, I'm telling you, there's not another situation for a new GM or a coach to come to than Jacksonville. It's just, it, it, it is. No state income tax. I mean, you got nice weather. And then you got 
like most cap space, second round pick, you get to pick your quarterback, you get to bring in your guy, you get to you get yeah. another first rounder, you're gonna have the first pick in the second round, like and you got a shit ton of cap space, which I think I already said, but I, I think it's just a very attractive spot. Like I don't I can see what you mean. It's attractive, but I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to get a, like a number one, number one guy, but you might see like a number two, maybe somebody who's not, who wants to, be, to move up that can't because somebody is above them. So, I mean, to get Kansas City, I'm like, why would I want to leave Kansas City, bro? I got fucking Patrick Mahomes right here. I got one of the best, the best teams, the most explosive teams. In, I mean, uh, apparently he's looking for a job. <laughs> he's looking for a job. The only one you I'm, might get a number two. You might get a number two. You might get the second guy below the number one guy. The, the, the thing uh, uh, I mean, he's looking for a job, and I think it makes the most sense. And I think same for the KC coordinator. I mean, do you really want to go to Detroit? Do you want to go to New York? Like, no, those are terrible situations. Like, I, I just, I, the, the, I will say the Kansas City OC is more of a up in the air, but that if he's gonna like leave or not. But yeah. I think, I think if you're able to bring in that guy, I, I would either look at him or look at. Um, this one guy, I, I was looking into it. I guess his name's Joe Ortiz. He plays. He's um, he's somebody in the front office for the Baltimore Ravens, and apparently he's made a lot of. He's been a part of a lot of good picks. Oh. And honestly, I'm not even against the fucking analyst like the Raiders did with Mike Mayock, <laughs> which it looks like it's, it's doing pretty well. I'm gonna say, speaking of Detroit, um, Detroit Lions, Matt Patricia, and I believe their GM also got fired, didn't he? Was it both of them? I th- I don't know about the GM. I know, I know Matt Patricia, Patricia got never got cut. Yeah, he's um, a he's another uh, Patriots guy that's got fired this this year. Got Bill O'Brien and now Matt Patricia. Yeah, and what, and that's like, crazy because you know they they like to hire you know all these teams they like to you know hire coaches from the Bill Belichick tree. That's um, Bill Belichick, Matt, uh, E. Carroll, and, Belichick and Andy Reid, and and yeah. Andy Reid, and that's why then that's a good reason why I I think Kansas City the offense coordinator is good is because. Uh, I mean, everybody that comes from Andy Reid's like tree usually ends up doing pretty, being pretty well. Versus Bill Belichick is always kind of fifty fifty. Like, I mean, Mike Vabrel, they I can never say Vabrel, Vrabel, yeah, Vrabel from uh, Tennessee seems to be working out. And then you have Brian Flores; he seems to be doing pretty well. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Matt, when Matt Patricia came in, I mean, they kind of uh, I think the previous coach was Jim Caldwell, and. um if you just look at their records from Jim Caldwell's records, you know, his last two, three years, they were way more competitive. Matt Patricia's. Teams. Yeah. He, the, the guy got fired for no freaking reason for Matt Patricia. Who's done nothing. Absolutely nothing. I think he was like, you know, obviously a, a, a losing record around. So I kind of expected, I was, I was hoping they would fire him earlier. Like fucking like with the franchise quarterback too, mind you with the franchise yeah. quarterback. And you kind of got a decent run game. Like, I don't know too much about the lions, but, that's yeah. you to have that bad of a record with Matt Stafford, who's a, honestly one of the more underrated quarterbacks in the league. Super underrated, bro. If, I feel like if he was in a different organization, this this man would. The Lions or the his the, reputation the, would be so different. The Ford family, fucking, they are so awful at running that organization. Like they have, the Lions have been historically bad for God knows how long. And they give him that huge contract. Oh my God. That's what that's what made everyone turn against him as well. His performance didn't meet what he was getting paid. But we know he's good. Just the team around him as well. Yeah, the team's bad. Yeah. It's uh, and it's it's a it, it trickles down, man. It's like it's from the ownership. The same thing in Jackson. It's the fucking ownership, then it's front office. All that it, it comes down. That's why Patriots are so good. That's why Andy the the Chiefs are good. The Seahawks. It's just it's all culture. It's all it's all up top. That's why the Cowboys so, will never be good. Because Derry <laughs> Jones needs to get the fuck um, I mean, out of the locker. He's like, not going to get rid of that team. He's, they just built a new stadium. No, I mean, he needs, to, he needs to just get the fuck out of the locker room and let somebody way. else come in. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, like, yeah somebody tell Derry Jones, please get out of the way. Please get away. You know, get get out of your own way. Yeah, he, right. He's so Derry Jones <laughs> is so cocky because he thinks just because in the early 90s when he had Emmett Smith, Troy Aikman, and Michael Irving and Deion Sanders, like that team was stacked and Jimmy Johnson – as coach, like he thinks he can do it again, but like, bro, sometimes you just a blind squirrel finds a nut, bro. Like the Cowboys haven't been good in fucking almost thirty years. Like the dude needs to just hire something. He needs to fire himself. He needs to fire himself, bro. 
I, I highly doubt that, bro. That guy's ego is too big for him to do that. Um, yo, can we start looking ahead at this week, football weekend? Let's do kinda it. Do the matchups. Yeah. Tough matchups. These, these are the games it. that I, I think it's kind of kind of interesting. Uh, we got Cleveland at Tennessee. I, th- I believe Cleveland is, uh, like I said, oh. those are two, two, eight, and three teams. Cleveland's obviously the number two uh, just below uh, Pittsburgh. Um, like I said, they, if you look at their points differential as far as points afforded, uh, points gained, and then the points uh, against them, they're in the negatives. Um, I think Baker Mayfield at Baker Mayfield is not as bad as he was last year, but he's not performing to like an elite quarterback level. And I'm tired of seeing Baker Mayfield commercials. I see more Baker field commercials than touchdowns. Um, but their, their, their offense is rolling, man. Like Kareem hunt and Chubb, they're rolling dog. They're the Chubb's best. Beast, bro. They're the best. I think they're the best combo. They're the best backfield in the NFL. Honestly. Everybody knows Chubb's the guy. Chubb, Chubb is that guy. Like he's, you can get another Kareem Hunt, but Ch- Chubb Chubb is that guy, especially what he did last. And let's not let's not forget Tennessee either, because Tennessee is I think Tennessee is a legit team. I think that, you know they showed them. I think last year they sh- they kind of showed a little bit of improvement, like oh maybe they're kind of in the mix. They were, and, but I think you didn't know. Th- but I think definitely they stepped up. Um, you know we're uh, talking about upward, so yeah, they're, they're, there's On a the good right team, trend so. at the right time. I'm gonna be honest. I I was wrong about Tannehill. I thought for sure Tannehill had he just was a little streaky and he didn't do anything those those games he played. He threw, barely threw under, uh, barely threw over over 200 yards in a lot of those games. And I I thought they were just like they're they're a product of Derrick Henry. But I mean Tannehill really sh- he's showed up this year. I guess he he shows that that system works for him. Yeah, and I, I was really he surprised. Said, yeah, though he said those playoff wins last year weren't a fluke. I thought it was fluky as fuck. I really thought Tennessee was fluky as hell. I thought their well, I mean, defense barely, was good, and you had Derrick Henry. And I think the, I mean, the Ravens choked hard that fucking yeah. game playoffs. I mean, I think last year because you know the only way they made it in, I think was, was it Miami beat the was it Miami beat the Patriots, and that's how they got in. They got in like the back yeah. doorway. Like, they Miami beat the Patriots. Yeah. Miami beat the Patriots, and then they allowed because of the records or whatever that allowed Tennessee to get boosted. But they um, went through the gauntlet. They, they beat New England. Yeah. They beat Baltimore, and then they almost beat Kansas City. I mean, you're talking about the three best teams in the AFC last year. Like, yeah, I, I think this year they're legit. Like, you can't deny the Tennessee Titans that like they made a playoff run, but they definitely improved, and they're they're. They're to be noticed. You know what I mean? They're like, uh, like Jojo said, they're they're on the up and rise team. You know what I mean? They're gonna be Cleveland. I want to know Cleveland's record against above five hundred teams because I feel like they've had some oh, of the easiest even. schedules ever. Like, I mean, yeah, they got blown have- out against the Steelers. Like, they got they lost against the the Ravens. Like, they've beat just shit teams. Like, yeah. Well, let me look at their schedule right now because I, I don't have their whole schedule. I, I do know that the, the next couple weeks for the Browns are gonna be tough. Um, because I think they play. Let me see. Uh, where I'm pulling it up now. Why is not? I'm on NFL.com, but it's not showing me. So they play the Titans, and next week they play the Ravens, which is obviously their uh, their rival. Um, if I pull up their full schedule, I think the best. I think I, actually, I think I'm thinking from off of memory. I think the best wins they probably that the Cleveland Browns have probably had is probably the Colts, and uh, they beat the Colts, and they beat an, They played another team close. Which was Vegas? I know Vegas. No, they beat bro. Look, this is this is the teams they beat. Like, listen to this. They beat the Bengals, Washington football team, the Cowboys. Garbage. They beat the the Colts. Is their only good win? That's probably Colts. They barely beat the Bengals again. They beat the Texans and they beat the Eagles and they beat the Jags. They yeah, beat the th- shit teams. Like the the I only think- team above five hundred is the Colts. And yeah, I knew I, I knew I was right about that. I was like, there's got to be like. I was gonna say, they, as far as playoff teams that they've played, all the other teams are shit teams, right? You talking about Giants, Dallas, Eagles? They're not making the playoffs. So the only playoff, the couple playoff teams that they've uh, uh, playoff worthy teams that they've played is the Colts and and maybe the Titans, or, the Steelers uh, and the Ravens. The, Steelers, but Steelers obviously they're the best team. I think. I think and the, the Ravens, and then you had the the Raiders, which might squeeze in the playoffs. They're a little hit or miss. But yeah, I mean they played the NFC East, bro, and then they they played their own division, and then it looks like they're playing the NFC South. So they play NFC so, South, NFC East, like. 
I'm telling you, in six this game, wins. Like, yeah, in, in this game, I think you know they're eight and three, but uh, you know, I, I think I like Tennessee in this game because, hundred percent. Like I said, tennis, yeah. tennis, the, Tennessee's playing at home. Okay, and Tennessee, you know, they're, they're making a playoff run. I think Tennessee is going to clearly make the playoffs um, this year. Oh but yeah. I think overall, I think Tennessee is a better team. I, I expect them to win this game. Not easily, but I expect them to win this game. Yeah, you know 100%. I mean? Tennessee should. I, I'm trying to. I want to see what the sports book saying. Yeah, ten, Tennessee is 100%. They're at home. They should be the favorites because they're at home. And yeah. I, I don't know what the weather is. I don't know what the weather. I expect it's going to be cold in Tennessee because you know we're we're getting into winter. December, whatever, second, third. Yeah, they got Tennessee minus six. They have Tennessee winning by a touchdown. That that's kind of expected. Um, um, yeah, basically I by a touchdown. Best game in the game going to be that close though. No, so I, think, I think so. I think maybe. I like. I think that's a that's a good. I, I, I wouldn't bet on that game. Like, because I could see I could see Cleveland covering that spread. I could see them covering that spread. Get within six, but uh, the next game of the week that I think is kind of interesting is Indiana at Houston. Um, uh, I think Houston is a, I think a lot better than the record says it is. They've um, had they've an had, extremely hard schedule. Yeah, they've had a hard schedule, and uh, uh, I think they got some talent. I mean, I think it was it was big losing uh, DeAndre Hopkins, obviously to Arizona, um, but yeah. I think Deshaun Was Deshaun Waskin. Oh, can't even speak. I've been drinking. I've been drinking too much. That's why I've been drinking. I've been drinking. Been drinking. <laughs> Deshaun Watkins. Boy, needs some, some water. water. Um, I still think he's a great quarterback in this league. Um, uh, but Indy, you know, the Colts—they're obviously in the run. They're they're trying to make uh to get into the bubble, uh the playoff bubble. Uh, I think this is like Indy's kind of tough getting to it. Well, Indy's good team though. They're really good. Um, Houston, they it's just have a shit game. defense. Houston has an awful defense. And honestly, everybody talks about the DeAndre Hopkins trade and everything. I mean, yeah, it was kind of dumb, but like, it wasn't like the end of the world for them. Like, they still, like, Will Fuller really stepped into his own, like, with him being gone. And like, you, if they can get him, I mean, Brandon Cooks has have, had an off and on season, but like, they still kind of got some weapons there. It's not the greatest, but it wasn't I, I think the defense is for sure like the weak spot of that team. Like that secondary sucks and they can't stop the run to save their life. Uh, yeah. But so, this, they so have right this now, game really close though. They have it yeah. minus three and a half Colts. They have it by a field goal. I, I wouldn't say, in my opinion, I, I think they're kind of a middle of the road team. Um, obviously, they're in the same division as the Titans. So they're seven and four. The Titans are eight and three. Um, um, but I still think they can, they can, they can make the playoffs. I think. Um, uh, you know, like you said, they've had a tough schedule. They beat the Packers. Uh, they lost to the Ravens. Um, uh, they beat the Lions. Um, so, you know, they're, they're, you know, this uh, to me, this should be an interesting game because I think these are two pretty good teams. Probably not. not I'm not saying they're equally matched, but they're they're pretty close to each other um, uh, as far as competition. And uh, I think in this game, I kind of got. I think I got, I think I like Indy in this game. If I was to bet some money, for sure. Even though they're the away team, I that think are, I that run Houston. that run game is going to obliterate Houston. They're going to just pound that rock. Like, and Houston's going to have no answer for it. And AFC South as a whole has just had a really tough schedule because AFC South, um, they've they've had to face, and this is including the Jaguars. I mean, they had to face the NFC, um, the NFC North. The AFC um, East, no, the AFC North and the NFC North, and the uh, what's that? Um, oh my God, why is my mind drawing a blank? Um, what's nah, I think that was it. Yeah, I think that was it. I think yeah, they're, they're playing uh-huh. the NFC North and the AFC in the AFC North, which are really tough divisions, super tough divisions, and the so AFC I- West and the AFC West. So you're talking about three of probably top. Three of the top five divisions in the league. As far as games, I, I think I think like I said, this should be a pretty interesting one uh, to watch. Uh, just because the Colts are are they're in the hunt uh, or in the hunt to get into the playoffs. I wouldn't be uh, surprised if the Colts can come out and beat and uh, win the division over Tennessee. That's close. 
I mean, I mean the, did you see, did you see the indie, better. Did you see the indie Tennessee game? Like that game came down to the wire. Uh, yeah. and then and that's the only reason why uh, they have a game ahead of Indy, but Indy started off slow, but there's they're really coming together pretty well. That defense is nasty. Sure. They're going to destroy sure. Deshaun Watson. Like they're going to destroy. <laughs> yeah. And like I just I don't see Houston getting any pressure or being able to stop the run. Like there's there's no way. And so probably the next game I'm looking forward to obviously this week, I think that's pretty interesting. It's going to be LA Rams at Arizona. That's probably um, the best game of the week. Right. LA is seven and four, Arizona six and five. Um, I do think Arizona is an improved team, even though they're six and five. They're, you know, their record says they're in the middle of the road. I mean, they had a tough schedule. Sure. They yeah. started off handing off games in the beginning of the season, but now nah, they're really coming together. Kyler Murray, yeah. Hopkins. They had a hard, like, they've had a hard schedule. The hardest division in the league. And then they face the the Bills and the Chiefs. Or did they face the Chiefs? No. I know yeah, they faced they the, the Bills. Card. They played the Dolphins and they lost, which was a close game, but that was a fun game. Um, they played the Seahawks too, right? They played Seahawks yeah. and they won 37-34. Yeah. Um, uh, they played the Panthers and lost. But, I, I, I mean, I like Arizona at home. So, here's the thing. Uh, uh, LA is a team that I was kind of – thought they would be more competitive than they they have been um you know they're seven and four but i kind of expect them to be like top of the nfc really um yeah i, I had I the believe, complete listen, opposite i had the I complete drafted, opposite i drafted golf and i drafted uh not the uh what? golf and uh cooper cup cooper cup i meant to say did they run out of qbs did they run out of qb <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man. What? Who the fuck what? drafts golf? Like, who drafts? Dra- Was this Listen. a thirty-two person league? Like, what? <laughs> you had to grab a starting QB. Like, you just you were forced to. Like, <laughs> but I, I hope this is a fun game. I think this could be. This has a possibility of being a shootout. Um, you know, I think. Uh, I think, LA Rams are a defensive team first before their offensive team. I think their defense is better than the offense. But also, I think Arizona is like not to be fucking forgot about either because, you know, like I said, Kyler Murray is uh, Russell Wilson 2.0, and the kid is just exciting, bro. He's exciting to watch, and he's going to be huge in this league. So I, I think it's going to be a fun, a fun, a fun matchup. So either of these teams, I, I'll probably have. If I had to guess, put my money down. Slight advantage to LA. Slight advantage to the Rams. Slight. Yeah, they're minus three. Just because of the defense. Slight advantage to the Rams. That's a close um, but, game. But they had, I got I got A Z winning by field goal. Same. You would win that spread. No, actually. You heard it, you heard it here, folks. And listen, it's Arizona. Draw. So Shoot. it's inside. It's inside the stadium. So there's gonna be no win. So and Gonzalez is their kicker is a pretty good kicker. It should be fun, bro. That's a game that, like, I'm going to be looking at the stats and be like, yo, this is, this is a game I want to watch. You know what I mean? Thanks. Yeah, I mean, this is super close. It's like they they have the Rams as minus three, but it's plus 105 on the odds. Like, that's oh. that's crazy. That's like, super you, close. Yeah. Well, though, the fact that they're the the um, – I'm glad the, you're uh, looking at the odds because I don't even look at the odds. I'm not even a better or anything, but – like in, oh, I, I, love, mind, I love just, I love looking at spreads and like odds, uh, but like the, the fact that somebody being an underdog but still plus one hundred, like that's 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 pretty that's crazy. That that shows you how close that game is. I would honestly, I don't know, man. That's a that's a really close game. I I don't know if, I, but yeah, I mean, I would honestly, I think I'm the complete opposite take from you. I thought Los Angeles would be worse. I, I really didn't think they'd be that great. I think they'll be middle of the pack, maybe go like eight, eight, nine, and seven. Like maybe squeeze into the playoffs, which they still might be that. We don't know yet. But I I really thought that they were not going to be that great. I, uh, especially losing uh, Gurley, who seemed like to be like the force of that offense. Um, I knew their defense was already stacked with Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey and all those other guys. And I, I really thought we're really going to see like the downfall, the legit downfall of Jared Goff, but he seems like to be playing all right at the end of the day. I, I mean, he's holding on. He's holding on. He's, he's like, he's like, he's like, he's, he's a guy. Like, I, I he's don't know. Not. 
he's a guy amazing but he's enough he's enough he's a, you know he's like, a guy like uh, and i think he i don't think i don't see los angeles winning a super bowl with this man i mean they went to one with him but they obviously lost like i don't and that he just seems to be such a like they everything else around him needs to be going so well for him to be playing good yeah but, i think he he kind of shit the bed uh uh last week um, he he is viable to throw like interceptions, but like I said, I, I think of LA as a primarily defensive team, and I think what's going to keep LA in games is their front line and their corners. Uh, they, they they stay in games because of uh, because of that, um, and you know, golf is not like the perfect quarterback. He hasn't had like the perfect season. He's always had. I think he's more on the downswing now, especially after these last couple of weeks. Um, you know. But it should be fun. I don't know. I, I always said that golf is, you know, how he's going to play by the first two drives. Yeah. He, 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 he's not a guy who gets re- adversity. He's like, he, he's playing a bad game. That's going to be it. But DeAndre Hopkins on Jalen Ramsey, that's going to be one hell of a matchup. Uh, I'm going to look forward to listen. Hopkins is big, bro. I know Jalen Ramsey is big. Good. No disrespect to Ramsey. But he's no big. No disrespect to Ramsey. He, Ramsey's one of the biggest corners in the league, if not the, the dude's like six two or six we'll one. See. That's what I'm saying. I want to. I want to see this matchup. I think it's gonna be a really good. I mean, I think he did pretty well against uh, Metcalf. I mean, you need somebody like Ramsey in that division. I mean, you got Debo Samuel, you got Metcalf, and you got Hopkins. Like <laughs> you got big, yeah. fast wide receivers. So it makes sense that they way they went after him. But yeah, that's gonna be a really interesting game. That's definitely one of the, probably the best game of the week. Everything else seems to be like kind of blowouts. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. some serious spreads. I'm gonna Jags. try to live tweet it uh, of the games when I see it. You know what I mean? Everybody uh, go I'm follow like, our Twitter. Gabe's on the Twitter. He's got I'm some sort of hilarious. Handle. It's just me talking. Yeah. This is me bullshitting. Yeah. Kind of it's hilarious. Jokes. It's funny. Gabe running that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Yo, Jojo, what's that? We told him how to use hashtags today. Yeah. So you know, he, All right. you know, you guys want to rapid fire the rest of these games? There's not, there's not many. The games we're going to shoot them. I got them. I got them up right here. I got. I'm looking at my my spread. My, right. my sports book. All right. So Detroit. You got the you got the list. By the way, you want to say the record? Do you have the record right now? Oh yeah, the record. So right now, uh, as far we as we missed total two wins, weeks, guys. So sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we started from week six all the way up to you know we missed a couple weeks. Uh, right now, uh, JoJo has 35 wins. I have 36 wins, and Julian so far has 41 picks out of all of us. He's uh, 30, uh, 41 and 17. 41 and 17 is Damn. Julian. Oh, you know why? I really know. need to start going he hard on my sports upsets. book. Yeah, oh, so you do not go for upsets. He's got right. like five, and that's why I'm winning. That's why I'm winning. He's got, he's got four or five games on us right now. So you know how he, much money? You know how much money I would get from winning these games? So right now I'm looking at week 13. All right, let's shoot down through them. That was right. Baltimore. Oh, you want me? You got it or I got it? I mean, I got the whole list now. I got, the, I got, right, my, I got right. my sheets up. Dallas, right, Baltimore. Cool. Real quick, fast. Dallas, Baltimore, Baltimore, Baltimore 100%. All right, I think we're all Baltimore. 42 to 3. <laughs> New Orleans, Atlanta. New Orleans, Atlanta, New Orleans. New Orleans. Ah, that's a trap Nola. game. That's a trap game. Oh, no, no. I don't, is, is right. Taysom Hill playing? I don't know. Is Probably. Probably. I'm gonna go Atlanta. I'm gonna go Atlanta. You going Atlanta? Okay. I'm gonna go upset. I don't trust Taysom right. Hill. I don't, I don't trust him. Yo, Plus. Detroit, Chicago. I got, I got, I got Detroit. God, that's a shit fest, bro. I feel like I every know. time I pick the Bears, they lose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go Detroit. I think, I think firing Matt Patricia yeah, is gonna not, spark I'm something. Picking, I'm not, I'm not picking the Bears this time. I think, that, I think, week. I think that firing is gonna spark something, and I think Mitchell Trubisky is gonna. Ass All right. once again. We're gonna talk about Indy Houston. I said I got who did I say? I got Indy. I got Indy. I'm going Indy. Off yeah, of your spectacular takes. I'm going Indy. C- Cincinnati, Miami. I got Miami. Miami. But you know yeah. what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go Miami this one. Can't believe I'm saying it, but I'll go Miami. Yeah, I guess a backup quarterback. Washington City. Yeah. <laughs> oh, undefeated. You gotta go pick. <laughs> Las Vegas. I don't Jets. Think upset this week. I got the, I got not the, the Jets. It's Las Vegas. I got Las Vegas. I have Vegas. never picking the fucking Jets ever in my life. Definitely not the right. Jets. I'll pick the Jets over Cleveland, the Jets, Cleveland at Tennessee. I'm going Tennessee. 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 
Let's see. Rams, Arizona. See, fun game. I got I'm Rams. Go, I'm gonna go with Arizona. Rams. Slight Rams. You I like. I like. I like Kyle Murray. I don't trust golf. Uh, like the home uh, I'm going, I'm going Rams. Rams. I'm going Rams. I mean, I'm sorry. A Z A Z. I think Why Arizona's easy? defense is good enough to stop golf. And I golf. So I don't. Giants at Seattle. Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> Seattle, yeah. Yeah. say less. That's a blowout <laughs> game. That's a yo. <laughs> oh, shit. They got it yo, only Philly. minus ten. It's only minus ten. Philly and Chili Green Bay. I got Green Bay. Green, Green Bay. Bay. I will never deny Aaron Rodgers. Green Bay. We're all Green Bay. All right. Green Bay. Is there New England at Chargers? L.A. Damn, I I gave up on the Pats. Sorry, y'all. Chargers. Sorry, Cam. Uh, no Patriots. I was hopeful. I, I was I hopeful you season. got the Patriots. I don't trust uh, I the Chargers. Boy, the Chargers Herb. can't hold a lead to save their life. Like Denver, I, I don't, they, I don't like that coach. Denver, they might have a quarterback. They might not. Denver, bro, Denver, guess what? If, if Denver has a quarterback, I'm going Denver. If they don't have a quarterback, you're a homer. as no, of today, yeah. Thursday, guess what the as of today, Thursday, guess what the spread is? Minus is fourteen. Like Jesus. <laughs> Damn, bro. Yo, if Von Elway's not throwing, Von Elway, I'm not picking Denver. Here we go. Kansas, Last Kansas game, City. Buffalo at San Francisco. That's, that's a good a long, game. That's, that's a good a game. Long, San Francisco's a Buffalo. San Francisco's a sleeper team, bro. You think? Ah, man, they're so hurt, Dude, bro. They, but they play well. I mean, they play they really do. well. They they honestly, I think that Mullen guy is better than Garoppolo. That guy's actually playing not terrible football. Like, so he's who actually, you got? He's, not terrible football. Who you it's got? Like, I like that San Francisco defense. Uh, you like San Francisco? Going he's going Buffalo because he's from Buffalo. Yeah, I'm going to go San Francisco on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Jojo always goes for Buffalo. I thought Julian was going to say that. I'm going to go Buffalo because he's, Buffalo cause he's going for his hometown team. I'm going to go San Francisco. I like. I like right. I, I've never been to Buffalo. <laughs> that, that's it for the week. That's it for the week. We'll, we'll see the records we'll updated next week. Yeah. But I'll be on the Twitter. I got to take the lead. I got to take the lead. I'll be doing the NFL Twitter stuff. Uh, Jojo, what, what's the handle that you want people to go look at? Or the YouTube. What's our YouTube? Our YouTube, what's Real our- Fans Podcast. Um, Google Real Fans Podcast. And same thing on Instagram, Real Fans Podcast. Facebook, Real Fans Podcast. Podcast. Twitter's Real Fans Podcast. Everywhere you go, just search up Real Fans Podcast. We'll be there. One more time, Real Fans Podcast. Let's go, guys. This concludes episode five. Thanks, you guys, for tuning in. Tuning in. Really appreciate the support. Go like, comment, you know, share our stuff. Again, we're fans podcast. See you next week. See you.